Welcome to my channel. I'm so happy to see you today. If you do like my videos, please subscribe to my channel so I can create more of what you like. What you're seeing here are just some papers that I collected to kind of get in the mood and figure out what I want to create today. So I always kind of try to collect different colors that I'm interested in. Each time it's different. So I just ripped up a few collage papers and I'm just putting them down on a piece of heavy mixed media paper. I think I'm using 140 pound here. I'm also trying something new and using that scraper to kind of really adhere it down so there's no bubbles. The bubbles kind of make me crazy, so I'm trying to avoid them. And again, I'm going to use the scraper up here, just using the fluid satin medium. I like a satin finish. I don't really like the high gloss right away. Maybe on top of everything is fine, but I like to start with a satin finish. And then just kind of playing around. You know, I don't really plan everything in advance. It just is whatever appeals to me. I try not to get too precious about it and just put something down. If I like it, I keep moving. So using the scraper again, just to kind of make it real flat. And I always put a little layer of the medium on top because that also helps it lay flat and not make bubbles. I was really interested in that piece of world paper. It was just a piece of collage paper that had kind of a map on it. So I was really drawn to it today. So I just wanted to include that. And you could see I'm using a little bit of like a yellow and a brown color palette, but that always changes as I go. So here I'm using a raw umber and bleached titanium colors. Just kind of blended them together and made a light tan. That's the bleached titanium. And then I added it to a little bit yellow. I forget what color that is. I'll put it down below in the description. But it's just kind of like a yellow, light yellow. And I wanted to kind of mute out that wallpaper looking collage piece. That is green gold, one of my favorite colors. It does look a little yellow, but for some reason I'm very drawn to green gold. I feel like you can mix it with so many colors and make such interesting shades. So here you could see I'm kind of just going hog wild. I just got a little carried away. I was painting in the zone, just having fun. That's one of the things I try to remember is just to really enjoy myself and not get too crazy about how it's going to turn out. So I was adding some drips, some water, really enjoying the colors that were kind of showing up. Adding some more to the sides. The great thing about acrylic paints is that you can create so many layers and do it over and over if you don't like it. So there's that raw umber and I'm mixing it with a little gesso. I do use gesso a lot for white. It's not quite as a uh, color, I guess opaque you would say, but it's cheaper and it also provides volume, which I use a lot of white. So here I'm just kind of going back in and removing a little of the moisture as well as going around and taking out a little of the color because I realized I kind of got lost in it and losing some of the actual collage pieces that I like. So just kind of remove it a little and reveal what's underneath. Now next I wanted to add a contrasting color it's kind of like an aqua blue. Mixed it again with a little white and create some, just a little difference in the composition. I wanted to show, I don't know, I just wanted to create a very different color. So 
So just having fun with the drips and not really thinking too hard about where I'm putting it. Blending in some areas. Just kind of creating interest in the piece. And letting, letting the process take over and just seeing what is revealed. I do love that number strip, but it does kind of create a feeling like I don't want to put anything over it, which can cause some problems as you're just freely creating. Kind of creates a precious spot, which I try not to do. So I'm just adding some magenta with white and creating a light pink color, which I love, and rolling the paintbrush around, adding some water, some drips again. My main focus when I'm creating is layers. I love creating different kinds of layers. So I always start with collage and then I add paint and then I move on to some other ways of creating later layers that you'll see later. So more drips, so easy and so satisfying. I had a piece of collage there I was trying out. A lot of times I'll just put collage down without painting it and see how it looks. I'll just leave it there and see if I like it. So here I am just creating a little white space and what I'm going to do is put down a stencil and then remove some of that white. So it creates like a reverse stencil. So what it does is it reveals the layers underneath and kind of blends in with the piece pretty easily. It's a neat technique that allows you to create a layer without adding paper. And I'm doing it again up here. And it just reveals the colors underneath, which is easy to blend in. It's soft. It's not as hard as a stencil that you just put on top. So here is a piece of deli paper that I painted, actually I stamped on top with acrylic paint. And it's one of my favorite ways to layer because I feel like the deli paper really gives you an opportunity to try things on before you commit to it. I try not to be too crazy about what I put down because the more I think about it, the more I feel like I'm not happy or I'm mess things up, if that's even possible. But I do love using deli paper for making jelly prints and then using those options in my work as collage pieces. So I did piece, put that piece of collage up in the corner there. I don't think I tacked it down yet, but that, that shows you how I kind of try things on, see if I like it, and then maybe try it in some different areas. And there's no really right or wrong. It, I just kind of follow my feelings. Like if I put something down and I'm like, oh, I like that, or ooh, I feel like that looks good, then I just put it right down. I don't really think too hard about it. Just whatever I like, my personal preference. So what I'm doing here is just creating a little space. I did have a cutout in mind that I wanted to use, this bird. Very interested in birds lately. So I've been creating a lot of things with birds. So I put some gesso down first, and then here is some medium to adhere the bird. Now I printed this bird out on my inkjet printer and I put it on the deli paper so it would be kind of transparent. The interesting thing about doing this technique is that you have to be very careful of the top layer because that ink will easily smudge and come off. So you have to be 
kind of clear about where you're putting it and when you put it down. I would not suggest doing a layer of medium on top of it because it will smudge the ink. Later on, I'll do a fixative on top of it so that when I do a final clear coat on this piece, it won't smudge. So I'm just using another stencil, creating some interest and shapes in the area. They kind of got smudgy because I was using a paintbrush instead of a dabber. I like this shape. It's kind of a soft diamond, so it creates a little interesting shape. So what I wanted to do next is to kind of create a little bit of a virtual nest around him. I don't know, that's kind of just how I looked at it. Just a few circles. I used a micron pen. It was a gray color. It wasn't dark black, so I didn't want it to compete with the bird. And I just cut it out. It was on the deli paper, cut it out with scissors. And then here I am using the medium to put it down. And that deli paper kind of disappears in the background, the edges, when you tack it down with some medium. So it just looks like a little virtual nest around him. It got a little tricky putting down, it got wrinkled because of the circular part of it, I guess. I didn't put it down all at once. Doing little pieces kind of made it a little wonky. But then I found my dabber and I love little circles. Went a little crazy with the circles, but I do enjoy that shape. So then I went back in and removed a few because I felt like it was too much. There's always an editing process going on. Nothing is permanent or forever. You can always kind of play around with it. So I usually put stuff down, take a minute, look at it. Do I like it? Do I not like it? And then this is an ink tense pencil that I'm using on the edges. It's a very light piece, so I wanted to introduce some darker lines just to give it a little bit of a border. And with the ink tense pencils, you can wet them and then they kind of turn into a watercolor. So that's what I'm doing with the paintbrush. I just have a little water on the paintbrush and I'm kind of dabbing as I go. So it gives a little bit of a border, a little bit of a darker color. Here I'm doing some splatters with just a little gesso and water. Just kind of gives a little bit of interest around the bird. And then I wrote, every, the whole time I was doing this, for some reason the word lovely kept popping up for me. So a lot of times when I'm painting, I just follow my intuition, whether it makes sense or not. So I just wrote that on a piece of deli paper and then combined it in with the rest of the piece. One of my favorite things to do at the end is to use my Posca paint pens, but for some reason this one I didn't really use a lot. Tried a few things out, didn't work, but here I am with the Micron pen, just making some marks and this is usually one of the last things I do is I go around and kind of make some marks, try to bring out some of the shapes I see in the piece. It's always a process of doing a little stepping back, doing a little stepping back and looking to see what I like. And then here I am still with the Micron pen, identifying those circles, just bringing them out of the background a little bit. Same with the stencil. 
identifying that negative space. Just kind of brings the eye to it a little quicker. I have to say I love the micron pens, especially the ones that are a little thicker. They're just so useful. You can use them and they don't bleed. They're archival, archival, I guess you say it. And uh, they're just really great pens to use on any surface, really. So there it is, my lovely bird. Thank you so much for watching today. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up so I know to make more like it. And subscribe to my channel. I would love to see you again.